Hey everyone, Christian here, and I want to go over a few uh, types of media that can be used when growing palms. And this is probably a, should have been one of my first videos. I did it a little bit um, when I first started doing the videos, but they really weren't that descriptive. I'm going to try to be a little more descriptive in these videos. So first thing I want to go over is a very common um, media that's used in many, uh, almost all the uh, soil types that you're planting uh, mixtures you will you'll find around, and that is uh, perlite. So perlite is right here. It is a volcanic glass that has been superheated where it kind of, uh, kind of not an explodes, but just pops into these little porous pebbles or it, and can therefore be like crushed into smaller pieces. And it's used, it's a very common um, plant media. It is uh, a glass. So these fine particles that are on my hands, you don't want to inhale this stuff. If you open a, a, a uh, bag of perlite, Make sure not to either wear a mask or not put your face in it because if it, especially if it's dry, it's going to uh, kind of blow up in your, not, but it's going to blow uh, particles up in your face and you don't want to have that, you don't want to inhale that, that will get into your lungs. I mean, it's happened to me, but I wouldn't do it on a regular basis. So yeah, this stuff is very lightweight. It, uh, it does hold moisture. It's porous. So and it will eventually, basically what it's used for is it's used to lighten mixtures it also holds some moisture, so it will kind of trans, uh, trans not transform, but uh, transition the moisture into the organic media while offering drainage of, of extra water that is not needed in the pot. So uh, this will tend to lighten your mixture. If you feel like your mixture is too heavy, go ahead and add some perlite. You can add, sometimes I use three quarters perlite and one quarter organic. So um, there's perlite for you. Again, it comes in different sizes as well. So this is going to be the uh, the fine type. There's there's one size smaller. It's called extra fine, and then you have medium, and then you have coarse, and then you have, sometimes you have, there's a type. Uh, it's called XXL, and XXL is quite large. And unless you're potting up massive plants that require really good drainage, you're probably not going to have a use for it. It's used for other other th other uh, other things. So. Um, we're gonna move on. This is this is the um, I believe this is fine. This might be very fine, but I don't honestly I don't really check much. The best place to get perlite, you'll see it at uh, big box stores. Look for a big uh, either plastic or paper bag that has perlite in it. It's gonna be about six cubic feet and about fifteen to twenty dollars. That's gonna be your best deal, especially if you're potting up more than just a few plants. Because if you're just potting potting up a few plants, you can get you can get away with. Uh, the I think it's like eight quarts in the uh, pay, the plastic uh, pull tag uh, bags, but it's going to get expensive. It's going to be like five dollars for the small bag, with twenty dollars for like uh, you know twenty times as much. So you're better off just buying in a bigger bag and being able to use it kind of for a little bit of everything. This can be used for rooting stuff if you want to root cuttings. Uh, perlite is great. It does it will attract mold after a while in heavy moisture conditions, but it tends not to get too overgrown and I've seen many cuttings sitting in um, very wet perlite doing just fine because of the drainage and the, the porous uh, consistency of, of the material. So we're going to move over to the next media. So hold on. Okay, so the next media here it might be kind of hard because of the sun. This is silica sand. It is uh, the, the difference between silica sand and perlite, they, they both offer great drainage. Um, and they will hold a this silica sand will hold a lot less um, moisture. In fact, it's very little uh, when used properly. This is a finer sand. The coarser the sand, the less moisture it's going to hold. There's less surface area on each particle of sand. So, when getting sand, just you don't have to get the you don't have to get silica sand. You can get because it is a little bit on the pricier side, but you can get um, anything that isn't heavy and other. Materials like I wouldn't just use just the sand in, in your backyard or don't use the sand from the beach It's okay for like coconuts, but if you're using tropical uh, Plants you just want to use some sand that's been treated to some extent you can use you can use paver sand It's gonna be a little, a little bit finer than this, but you're gonna it's gonna become a, a heavier pot So that's one downside to uh, Silica sand or sand in general is that um, unlike perlite it is a lot heavier. It's not porous. It is inert and um, it's just better for just overall drainage and to actually get, give some weight to a pot. So um, this is used in most plant mixes to some extent, uh, depending on how much drainage is required. And it is, uh, I couldn't tell you how much this is. It's bought by the cubic yard. I don't know uh, what was paid for this, but it's not terribly expensive. It's sand. It's not 
uh, it's not gold. So, um, but yeah, it, it's good to have this around, especially when you want to, uh, you know, a pot's really lightweight. It has too much, too little material, too much lightweight material in it. Adding a little bit of sand at the bottom or in the mixture can definitely help out a lot. So, that's, the picture is excellent there. Let's see if it can come out a little bit. But you can see it's just, it's sand. So, uh, you know, so, like I said, silica sand is not required, but it is the best sand to get. And I would get a little bit coarser than this. Um, the, it comes in just different types, like just like the perlite, fine, very fine, uh, medium, coarse, and then you can get it in like inch. So you can get it in like eighth of an inch size. So uh, look around. You, your local aggregate supplier should have this stuff. You may find it at a big box store if you're lucky. Um, so look around and see what you can find. But it is very useful for um, planting different types of uh, palms, tropicals, that sort of thing. So we we'll move on to the next uh, media here. Okay, so this is actually a planting mix in itself. And this is a uh, common uh, mix used actually in Florida. It's known as the 7000 mix or the, uh, the Decker mix from Atlas Pete in uh, Boynton Beach, uh, which is near West Palm. So a uh, fellow palm grower by the name of Kurt Decker designed this mix about 25 years ago for his plants and he actually offered it as a as a mix it's not a it's not a secret recipe they if you want to know what's in it <clears throat> they, they'll give you the analysis at uh at the the place um at atlas and uh so the breakdown of it is I, mean, I don't know the exact percentages but there is if we pick up a little block of it here let's see what we can do you see there's actually a decent amount of sand in here Oop, there we go so there's uh, a good amount of sand there is Perlite, um, to some extent, not a whole lot though, because there's a good amount of sand. The perlite is just kind of there to lighten it a little bit to not make it so heavy. Let's see if I can get that back in focus. So, um, the other materials are actually going to be sawdust. I believe 10 to 15 percent sawdust and Canadian peat, which is often the base of many tropical mixtures. The problem with Canadian peat is that it will hold in a lot of water. So if you need drainage, you want to lower the percentage of the Canadian peat that you're using or any kind of peat for that matter just shredded peat in general whether it's Canadian or from whether whatever, whatever country as long as it's shredded you're going to want to be careful and want to cut it up a little bit the best time to use this Canadian peat on its own is for if you're uh, potting up stuff like aeroids um, those are that's probably when you're going to want to use it just by itself or just super tropical plants that will like swampy conditions um, so if you, you know we look through it it will it is, it is kind of blocky but it will, let's get a little better, sorry, doing this with one hand on the phone, the other is uh, with the soil, so, um, but there is a good amount of sand, I want to say it's like 35%, and the Canadian peat somewhere around 25%, if not more, and um, there's, there's some other stuff in there, I don't, like I said, I don't know the, the exact percentages, but it is, this is a good mix for most subtropical and tropical plants, it's probably more geared towards tropical, um, because it does have the drainage, which a lot of tropical plants do need because they will grow say on mountainsides and they want to be able to let's see in, in the shade here they, they want to be able to uh dr they the water runs by their roots so they don't necessarily just sit in uh water all day long but they will get rained on and uh water will run down so that is the decker mix and this is again this has been used for quite some time um there's also oh pine bark nuggets are probably in there i believe some kind of uh uh shredded uh, not nuggets but the, the sh uh, shredded nuggets whatever you want to call that just pieces so that is going to be the extent of the soil mixes that are used uh, over here and it is this is a rich mix if you want a drier mix for drier plants you're going to kind of have to kind of make your own so if you say you wanted a drier mix than this because like this is for say tropicals you would want to cut it with some uh, more sand. I wouldn't recommend. Maybe some more perlite. There isn't a whole lot of perlite in here. Um, you could add. Uh, you could add some coarser sand. You could add some lava rock. Um, you could add. Actually, you know what? Thinking about that, let's let's go over. We'll be right back. So here we are at our last um, media, and that's going to be pumice. Although it's misspelled on this. And this is, gives you an example of what pumice is. It, pumice is a type of igneous rock formed from molten or partially molten material. Addition of a little as 10% pumice in potting media and garden soils results in the following advantages. Bulk density of mixes. Porous nature holds vital nutrients. Excellent conditioner. 
loosens the density of a heavy clay garden, which is a problem in a lot of, uh, like say the west coast of Florida, where I live on Cape Coral, there's a lot of, it's just sand and clay, and a lot of it's just muck that has been pulled up from um, underneath the, uh, the water. And so to loosen that up and kind of give it some drainage and um, some, some porosity to it, uh, this does do a good job. So pumice is, is again, again, it's inorganic. So this is good for uh, a lot of drier plants that don't want to uh, accumulate any fungus or any mold uh, through if you need in a heavier watering area. So if you have succulents and you need some, <clears throat> some uh, media that is not going to uh, rot or going to accumulate uh, any sort of uh, bacterial or mold growth, this is very good for it. So um, it does hold moisture because of its porosity. Because of that, people don't realize that it, even though this is just rock, it will uh, hold moisture in the soil, as it mentions. So, uh, and it's, it's neutral, although most pumice is slightly alkaline from my experience, and I've tested it. So again, they spell pumice wrong. It's only one M. But that's okay, we'll forgive them. Now the people that, <clears throat> let's go in here and in the box, and you can see that this just, the rock is, you know, pretty fine. This would be like a, a fine to medium grit. And this is a cubic foot of pumice, and it costs about $30. So um, if you guys wanna know where this is, you can get this, this is from Amazon. Uh, the name of the uh, vendor is called uh, Nature's Footprint. So look for their one cubic foot. I believe it's $30, including shipping. So that's good. So the stuff is heavy. It weighs about 20 pounds, the cubic foot. Um, the reason I buy it in small quantities is one, is I don't use a whole lot of it. And two, um, it is very expensive. If you want to buy it in Florida, uh, getting a cubic yard shipped to you, which means you kind of have to buy a lot of it, you're going to run over $300 a cubic yard. To give you an example, uh, the Decker mix that I just showed you guys, the uh, the the pre-mixed stuff, that is about $62 a yard ship, so that's about one-fifth the price. So this is used mostly for cycads, for pupping. Um, here you can see I've planted some small cycads in pumice, and I might do another video on how to pup cycads and plant them in a mix if I get a chance. So this is where I use pumice. I don't use a whole lot of it, and these plants are a little bit more uh, valuable, so they do require, I mean, it, it isn't it isn't cost inefficient to do it this way. So even if I only pot up 10 plants, it's only $3 a plant, which isn't that big of a deal when it comes to cycads. So um, anyway, I hope this video was informative. You get to see the different types of media and how they're used, their costs, and what they look like. Also some alternatives that may not I may not be able to uh, get in the uh, video. So if it was helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. And if you want to see more videos, I'm sorry, yeah. If you want to see more videos, go ahead and subscribe. And if you have any questions about any of the media, where you can get it, um, leave, leave a uh, comment down below. And I will try and send the link uh, below the video for some of this stuff. So, anyways, hope that was informative. Have a good day.